I guess I can just make a video while I walk. <laughs> I am currently on route to do some grocery shopping. And then I'm gonna go back to the apartment and start the next part. I guess maybe I'll use this time here to talk a little bit about a kind of Michael Jackson 9-11 anecdote that I'm not sure where else to put. From, um, from September 7th through September 10th, or, or I think basically on the 7th and on the 10th, um, in 2001, Michael Jackson was having his 30th anniversary concert. Uh, he had borrowed a watch, like a $2 million watch, you know, maybe some kind of really expensive Rolex or something. I don't know, I don't know much about watches, but. Um, and was meant to return that watch at the World Trade Center on 9-11, the day after the concert ended. He wore the watch during the concert and was scheduled to return it with his um, personal assistant, Frank, um, uh, at just the time that the towers were, gonna, were eventually attacked. So uh, they would have died. I'm going to wait for the... train to pass. Um, they would have died in 9-11, but they didn't because... because Michael overslept, actually, which I think is a hysterical conclusion to that situation. He missed 9-11 because he was dreaming. <laughs> Uh, but the fact that it involves this wristwatch as well is, of course, very appropriate because of all of Michael's North Tower resonance that we have already noted. Here we find him once again existing in connection with a strong North Tower projection space element. Another another clock, for fuck's sake, you know? It just gets so bizarre seeing these elements again and again hovering around people like that. Well, anyway, I find it difficult to think on Broadway, so I'm gonna turn this off for now. I wanted to pick it back up here to note the passage of this element. We pass by that suspiciously twin-shaped rock formation. Uh, and if you remember, we careen right into this photo opportunity sign, which I find quite interesting in relation to the idea of the Fox photo. Just the idea of photography in general an interesting area of kind of potential constellation self-awareness. It knows that it ends up as a photo, or originates as a photo, or how to say. But this thing... <laughs> I mean, I suppose you know what I'm going to say about this thing. Just reminds me of a certain... funny creature we've seen. Especially you know, sort of crowning the end of this sequence. If you recall, it was a very massive stack that we analyzed in the in part one. But anyway, particularly because um, we immediately get double Michaels on the screen, you know, doing this dance sequence together. Which if you'll remember, then concludes with one of the Michaels, the strange speed demon rabbit-shaped Michaels, um, appearing there in the rock formation. What is going on with this player tonight? 
Anyway, this is a very dense section. Um, thinking about the timeline of the film, we had that big, um, big section of material that constitutes the Speed Demon music video. And then that cuts straight into another music video. This is now Leave Me Alone, which we're going to see has a ton more activity. I kind of think of the whole thing as one giant um, peak of the constellation wave shape in this particular artifact. Is this really the first frame of this thing? No. Right. So we, we, we begin right following this weirdness, which might make you want to read backwards, right, to the uh, strange rock formation I was noting before. Now it's been combined with the weird bunny and, the, you know, it's kind of set up by the, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We know, we, we know the, <laughs> we know the tune now at this point, I, I hope. This is a in very interesting music video. First of all, as someone who is a video artist and who works with video in a collage sort of way, I find this video to be absolutely virtuosic. Um, I don't know off the top of my head who made it. There are so many artists and names and so on to remember with Moonwalker, but I'll just throw it up somewhere. Um, whoever made this masterpiece is a complete video genius in, in my view. I'm not going to be talking too much about all of that stuff because I just I want to keep us moving through the material here but gosh the compositing work and just the, the creativity and the attention to detail the fact that in the end it doesn't really look like collage anymore it, it, it looks like these fully realized sort of video worlds you know. This song is one of the first overt discussions of media and paparazzi in Michael Jackson's discography that I'm aware of. You know, we have Thriller, uh, and then Bad, and, well, and then of course we have Dangerous, and then eventually we have uh, History. And Thriller is of course an album that is very much about movies in some way, because you know the main centerpiece of that is the song Thriller, which is about horror movies. <laughs> but this theme of kind of media paranoia is not present here yet. That that begins on bad, pretty much with this song. Um, and then by the time we get to Dangerous, it's like the main theme of the album now is about Michael's life and the media spectacle of his life and the metaphor that Dangerous adopts for that is the carnival. Um, we see that in the album artwork, of course, for Dangerous. Um, it's another beautiful collage thing that looks quite a bit like many of the specific tableaus we see um, in Leave Me Alone. And then the music itself. <laughs> Dangerous is an interesting album. I, I, I almost don't like it. Uh, there's something very tiring and claustrophobic about it. On the other hand, I often think that's pretty appropriate given the subject matter. And Well, there are moments of incredible inventiveness on it. It's you know, a great album. Um, but it has sort of carnival language, as it were, woven into the music itself as well. It's hard to describe exactly how that happens. Um, it's a lot of like chromatic motion in the melody and just a lot of strange sounds that evoke carnivals. I don't know since we'd have to do a more detailed analysis of the, of the album probably at some point. Incidentally, this relates to Carnival Night Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 because for a little while it was like Michael Jackson was composing some of the music for that thing and well, anyway, that's some whole other weird story. Um, uh, but so, anyway, history then has tracks on it like um, 
tabloid junkie and others. So the, you know, those themes just continue. Um, but they really begin here on Bad with this song. And Leave Me Alone is the last song on Bad. And it, it does seem like a, uh, not a sonic foreshadowing so much, but a visual and thematic um, cliffhanger almost that then gets immediately picked up on and reworked into the full album that is dangerous. So. Anyway, none of that's really relevant for the 9-11 sync stuff, of course. It's just me being a geek about these albums. Um, but some interesting information there um, about that for people who care about that. <laughs> Very first thing we're looking at is a trailer. You know, immediately my sync brain is thinking about double meanings. And so I'm thinking, okay, trailer. Also like a movie trailer. And I was just saying, oh, we said it was right that this is like a cliffhanger almost that then gets developed into what dangerous becomes. But a better way to put it is that this is like a trailer for what dangerous becomes. So that's a little um, funny and wonderful such a thing should appear. Weird trailer though. I've never seen a door like that in a trailer. It kind of simultaneously evokes a jukebox and a well, it is definitely a twin pillar thing, isn't it? Palm trees make me nervous. Um, <laughs> you know, in the sense of, um, I believe this element may have been placed by a higher agency. It's simply an explosion-like element. Correct color space, green and yellow that appears next to a vehicle. <laughs> it's funny, my flatmate Abe is watching TV in the other room and they're suddenly talking about the Jackson 5. I don't know if that got picked up on the microphone, but... Um, it's very interesting, you know, that Michael Jackson is present in this shot, but he's they, they've put him in, they've placed him in the ground. And the first time you watch this video, you might not see him back there because um, it kind of just looks like elements that could belong to the mountain landscape. But um, no, you know that this is Michael Jackson's leg raised here. And here's his face, the um, nose, which is um, other people have noted resembles Peter Pan's nose a little bit from the Disney cartoon that Michael was a really big, really big fan of. Um, I mean, obviously he had a whole thing with Peter Pan, but that film specifically, the Disney film specifically. Um, and then here's his arm extended upwards and they've, we'll see this more, we'll see this more clearly later in the video. They've extended a kind of um, um, roller coaster track around his arm. So Michael has become the foundation of a carnival that also, you know, he has to remain frozen and motionless and um, in a kind of uncomfortable position to sustain this carnival. So that's a cool um, metaphor for the carnival of the Michael Jackson celebrity persona. But right now it's in the background. By the time we get to the end of the music video, this will be this whole situation will be very much in the foreground and this imagery will be in the foreground. I think this is the first time in the video that we're seeing Michael explicitly fused with the idea of a building or a landmark other than what we just saw, right, that leads into this sequence when his bunny gets fused into the rock formations. This is a motif that, of course, reaches its conclusion, if you like, in the imagery that was produced for the History album. I added in some of that, some of the promotional footage that was done for that album in the um, first Moonwalker analysis video. Um, it's loaded, of course, with Red Twins imagery. Um, I guess we'll talk about this when we talk about ghosts, but History had a sister album called Blood on the Dance Floor, which also receives precognitive content, in my opinion. Um, and 
it does form a nice blue and red pair with one of the Michaels, the blue Michael, correctly as the one that becomes the statue, and the red Michael as the one that um, gets the blood. Um, but so anyway, big blue statue, it's very, very Mr. N, as we sometimes say on this channel. Um, black and blue. And anyway, so here's Michael becoming a tower. That begins here in this video. Pretty nice match, actually, because we get this nice rotating um, dish, satellite dish. So that's North Tower and Antenna Resonant, of course. It's a nice slow zoom in on this strange trailer. It's, it's a trailer that was uh, sitting on an island, right? So the theme of, of isolation is present here. I really find it weird and unusual that it's a trailer. I guess that's pulling in just some strange kind of Americana aspect. It's hard not to think that's a double meaning. Some kind of play on the idea of a, of a movie trailer, though. I'm interested in what's going on here at the top. It's a little, you know, the resolution's not so good. Um, hard to say what that is, but I would like to note that it has a red element on the left side. Um, and actually, just backing up a second here. Well, that was a bit far. Well, we can just look at this weird thing again while I talk about it. Um, that entire first image of the Leave Me Alone video seemed to me to constitute an, an inverted match, right? There's even another tower here, a little sort of castle tower, even with a little sort of antenna extension right next to Michael's head here. So, so right, that's one, two, three North Tower elements all on this side of the image. And then over here we have the, the, the predictable array for the South Tower, even including the legs an explosive element with correct color space and then the vehicle kind of um, colliding into it as it were. So yeah, I'm pretty confident um, <laughs> diagnosing that collectively as a as an inverted match. There are, there are just very many interesting elements here, aren't there? Kind of looks like this is a pick or a shovel maybe or something. Implies that maybe some digging has happened here or is about to happen there. I'm not sure what this colorful element is here. Do we see it maybe in a second? Let's keep an eye out. What is that? Funny. It's like parrot colors or something. Now see, this is like a porthole on a submarine, you know? Strange. Okay, so I guess the first thing is we, we see Michael here situated next to a lamp. He then explodes out. He ejects out of it like you would eject out of an airplane. So it's a trailer. It's a submarine. It's an airplane. Hello. I wanted to non-linearly pop in from the future here as I'm editing to um, say a few more things about this trailer because I've, I've had a chance to think about it a little more. So I'm going to reverse the camera here and we'll just pick it up right off of the laptop. It's weird how you can stare at a thing and not perceive these details, but... Look at how this trailer is mapped onto Michael's body, of course. I mean, we have the antenna broadly associated with the head. Technically, I guess it's more over the chest, over the heart, maybe. But what I think is really notable is... Here, let's full screen this, actually. Um, is how this element is positioned... directly where Michael's uh, genitalia would be, right? If that's Michael's leg here, then this is right where the gonads would be on the body, and it's kind of marked by this, what to my mind is a, a rather sexual-looking object, big red uh, circle. Uh, trying to be modest and not say big red hole, but yeah, that's basically what that is there. 
Um, of course, we've already noted that it's flanked by these by this twin pillar um, design, which is evocative of the kundalini energy rising up the spinal column, which is another sort of sex magical idea. Um, and this element here, which we zoomed in on, or maybe we're about to zoom in on in the video, I don't remember exactly where I'm going to insert this, but um, I mean, if we were to just sort of invert this 180 degrees, you can see that that is, I mean, that's quite a phallus there. I hope we can all see how that how that works. So, uh, And then, of course, it's, it's really kind of picked up on by the animation sequence, because what happens at this location? Well, something ejects out of here. So we kind of have a, a, an ejaculation, really, that opens this sequence. Right? He shoots right out of the kind of genital um, <laughs> pipe there. But it's strange because what shoots out is a small Michael. So it's like a thing ejaculating itself in some way. I find all of that to be just an incredibly alchemical, whoops, sort of idea, an alchemical sequence. Um, it's an interesting alchemical idea, but it really enriches the match as well. Also, watching this now for a second time, um, I find this strange object really more notable than ever. Oh gosh, it's sorry for the dust on my display and all of this. I hope we have a nice screenshot right here of that object. Um, that thing, I mean, it really looks like Atomic Kid. Like, it looks like a little dinosaur, maybe. Some strange little animal, though, and positioned over, you know, asymmetrically. This goes by much too fast at normal speed to note it, but Here's the giveaway that that was Michael in the background. Um, it also means we get a hand over here. Of course, it's in the wrong position relative to the inversion scheme. So much like the Statue of Liberty, though, isn't it, that thing? It's like the torch hand, you know? We've already seen Michael interact with the Statue of Liberty in this film. <laughs> um, okay, so now we zoom... <laughs> It's interesting, like, we follow Michael up into the sky and then immediately we're looking back at the ground again. But two red spires, we're looking at the, the bottom of the door here. Whatever that colorful element was there, it seems to have disappeared, so who knows what that was. And now we just get a whole bunch of newspapers, I think, dropped here. Michael's Space Age Diet, National Intruder. And then this is an image of something. I'm not sure what that is. Is this maybe a teacup. That's some kind of food or something. I don't know. It's really hard to say what we're looking at there. Intruder could be thought of as being in the same pocket of language as words like terrorist and so on. So I'm already slightly interested in that word. This is a weird image. I, just, I don't think we're done with this image, but I, I never know what to make of it. I wonder if anyone has any thoughts. So then we get something just nuts right away, which is now we have a, you know, a tower that's definitely a clock tower. That then definitely has, there, there are many ways to think about this. This relates to a few things. It's a bunch of holes in the top. So one way to think about it, of course, is as the North Tower explosion hole. It also is alternating white and black, just kind of as a pattern, right? So that could also be thought to relate to the antenna. Um, and then of course we have the, seems to be a clock face there. And it's hard to say in this image, but I mean, it really almost looks to me like we have a blimp uh, or something anyway in the sky that's, that's quite evocative of a plane sort of heading towards that tower. Um, and then what must be some foliage, a tree maybe, down there in the corner, but gosh, you know, that's just right where we want to see it, diagonally in relation to these elements. 
And then bonus, we kind of almost get a plane in there, like we see in Residential Nemesis. The Dawnwood painting. Have I mentioned here on the channel yet that Residential Nemesis is clearly a pun on the phrase domestic terrorist, right? Map that out in your head. Domestic, residential, nemesis, terrorist. Really works. <laughs> Makes you wonder what Donwood was thinking about when he made that painting. It must have been in reference to the 93 World Trade Center bombing. <sighs> so strange that it receives 9-11 precog though. Okay, well anyway, back to the this thing. Um, so this is like a little match. Um, in, in in itself. We got a nice match. We have um, a camera here. So that's another North Tower element, you know. We'd like to see that kind of placed right on top of the tower or something, but it's, it's right there on the same side of this newspaper piece. I guess it kind of just bridge over into this side where we then have Bubbles the Chimp i.e. a strange animal, and we're looking kind of mostly at its weird face, so I think that's an Atomic Kid um, resonator there. I don't know what this is. Have any ideas about this image? Hard to say what that is. Bubbles the Chimp Bears All About Michael. So the idea of exposure, nudity, um, and kind of filming it, bears all global gossip, so a big global story. I find these words, you know, intruder, global gossip, and then like like an animal doing something lewd being filmed or, or something is kind of the unconscious um, associative scheme there. This says, step into the something. I wonder what it says. Note that this is also just at a kind of a higher level um, of, of um, analysis, like what's happening in this sequence, right? It's aggregating layers of imagery. We're literally forming a stack of pictures here. Now we have a, a marriage. Michael proposes to Liz. That would be Elizabeth Taylor, I assume. Again, it's another one of these intruder that must be a play on the National Enquirer, huh? That's Michael's little dig at the tabloids. It's another, we have another man with a f camera. We serve you quickly and secretly. Um, aha, and then this is, yep. It's just a bunch of Mr. Ends again. Look at all these Mr. Ends. You know, it's just like camera faces here with Michael's favorite thing. You know, just a bunch of fedora gentlemen. Drives me nuts to see that. <laughs> um, the Z bothers me here. You know, it's lightning on the right side and in connection with all these strange things. Next. Another marriage thing to Mary Brooke. Here we have another Mr. N. <laughs> That's my colloquial name for um, the North Tower um, in its manifestation as a psychic projection. Let's, let's take a second here to try to um, let people know I'm not completely off my rocker. There are meanings to these things when I say these things that are not completely crazy. They're thought through according to some kind of a scheme, you know. Um, the North Tower just has a look in that famous 9-11 image. Let's put it over here for a second. And it just kind of looks like a figure with a belt with a pair of glasses or else like something weird in front of its face. And then it has this like black and white antenna. And I just think in a kind of dream image way that's really similar to just a hat, you know? So the North Tower is just this kind of funny glasses wearing belt buckled fedora up Mr. N thing that gets struck by lightning maybe and sees something very weird and films it maybe or uh, 
Uh, you know, and then there's just like smoke pouring out of his face or out of his eyes. That's kind of the the strange mythic scene that 9-11 might suggest to you if you took it seriously as a painting and if you um, allowed yourself to imagine things in it. That's why it's the projection space. Okay, back to our stack of aggregating images. Two figures in a fight. A house that seems like it's kind of divided into two houses. It's kind of a sense of two buildings here. It says, now your something home, now your dream home comes true. Kind of almost looks like it says New York, though. Funny arrow here. Hmm. Interesting one. In any case, two figures and kind of like two roofs, two buildings. Okay, so that was our little stack. We get, I think we get more of them. Meanwhile, Michael is sailing through the air still. Speaking about the video collage techniques here, this stuff to me is just virtuosic. Like, we have objects rotating in 3D space here, you know? These elements would have had, they would have had to photograph all these and just... Wow, it's amazing. Okay, we get more here. Michael's cosmetic nose surgery. So we're going to talk about that explicitly. What lasts forever? Again, global gossip. Um, something... Electricity television. <laughs> this is definitely some strange kind of Mr. N communication tower figure here. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's, that's really strange. Michael and Diana, same person. And there's kind of a cloned Michael, except maybe that's Princess Diana in the background. So this is something about a facial correspondence match. We see this genre of kind of weird conspiracy thing alive and well today on the internet, by the way. I see very many weird YouTube videos in, in, in like the strange corners of YouTube that <laughs> I happen to live in. Um, and uh, that are just exactly this kind of thing. You know, these two people are the same person. They faked their death and came back as this other person or they this and that kind of thing. It's, it is interesting to me, though, because it, it proceeds on the basis of face pattern correspondence matching. <laughs> it is some kind of like larval sink thing. And then something about copyright patents. So co copying faces and what that might say about identity and then the idea of copyright with patents. Just don't waste time. Strange elements. Jackson's third eye starts sunglasses. <laughs> Again here, kind of radio television. And it's just a picture of Michael with a bunch of sunglasses. Just literally piles and piles of sunglasses that we then link to the idea of awareness, of perception, the third eye. Again, the context of global gossip. So let's say... Play guitar for pleasure or profit. <laughs> Jeez, just right again. This weird hat and the weird visor. No, it's just easy to play. All the comforts of home. Raised giant. <laughs> um, but anyway, Mr. N, like, whoa. We are looking at World Weekly Word. All the news that spits. <laughs> Michael Frozen for 50 years. I mean, wow, what a cool video though, don't you agree? Just like, it's like this little still life now with the fruit and everything. Like this painting in the background just to have something there. Just It's like moving out a frame even before you even could notice it really at the normal speed, but wow, there's just so much cool detail here. Come on. So we've been told many times throughout this film visually, I would say, but even just in that last sequence, uh, looking at the um, newspaper stacks, that Michael is a Mr. N. 
Michael is a North Tower resonator. I know, you know, I think history is going to vindicate me, but maybe I'm just off my rocker. In any case, I really do think that the curls, <laughs> uh, the jerry curls and the general shape of the hair on Michael look like the North Tower wound. Also, he's in blue here. And he's, he's embedded in a rectangle. You know, a vertically oriented rectangle with blue and black, you know? So it's all N color space stuff. Then over here we have this big circle with a goldfish in it. And wow, that's a beautiful and dreamy projection space match for the whole situation with Mrs. S. Don't you think? I think the Atomic Kid really looks quite a bit like a goldfish. Um, and we see goldfish elsewhere. There's a whole bunch of fish in a goofy movie that work as, uh, as matches. Um, I have to say, trying to understand this one as a match, um, it's a little messy or noisy. I, I'd like to see all the colorful fruit over with the goldfish. That pleases me, but I'd like to see this over there with it. I'd like to see all the green plant explosion-y things over here with it. That's Michael's white glove. That's acceptable, but it's quite close to the middle. I, I wish it was a little farther over here, and, and furthermore, the aluminum ought to be over here. So this is one of those that I think would be difficult to count as any kind of anything. Well, this is true about every single image in these films, but especially true maybe about an image like this. Um, you can't pull it out of the context. Existing, you know, like we saw with the aggregating, it's so strange that, that it shows us images being layered. Again, it's like self-aware. It, it, it sets us up to in, interpret. It gives us an interpretive key there. It tells us to pay attention to how the rest of the images layer in the video piece itself. And then when you pay attention to that, you see that they are aggregating these properties that are that appear to be under the control of the 9-11 reference object in some way. Obviously, that's a ridiculous bunch of language. I don't really mean any of that, but I'm just trying to talk through it in a way to kind of make some kind of sense. Anyway, in situ, I think we can read that as a match. I love the goldfish in the perfect spherical fish tank. Okay, we're moving through segments. It's as if we're moving through isolated individual collages, but that are linked by these transitions. I just love the form and the look. Well, okay, now we're in a very nice um, sort of match, I would say. Right? So it's the kind of the round red one. This is the blue and white um, one that has an antenna that's sharp. It also has many more vertical line things over here. That starts to look to me like it grabs some... Um, that this area, you know, bisecting the image globally, Michael's end resonating head and mouth and all of this appears on that side. And of course it's black and white print and language. So funny elephant thing up here is another like weird animal. Um, again, not positioned very nicely. It's almost the least correct location it could be in up there. We, we want, we want it to be okay right there, but, but it does appear there. Something I want to say as well, you know, there are levels of kind of analysis and match. I personally just find the, the clustering of the elements of the projection space together in time to be notable. So in other words, I, I find just this kind of thing notable, you know, here's a hat, here's glasses, here's some weird, animal. <laughs> Here's like two candles burning, you know? Here, Here's, you know, like just whatever it is, whatever you have in the individual match, right? Just the fact that those things all kind of pop around together, right? you know, it, it depends. Like you have to do a, a, a dimensional um, co coincidence fil filtering on that, you know, um, which is, which we're doing here by using the aggregating image idea, 
the idea being that if we see these things appearing repetitively, that that implies organization, right? Um, but there are other ways to do that. You might look for structures that are doubled up within the image itself and, and so on. Um, but um, assuming that you're doing, you have some solution uh, for um, mitigating the noise problems. Um, gosh, I just noticed that there are bowling pins. Michael, that makes him a, pin, a pinhead, potentially. Um, we've seen that pun. Where, where have we seen that? Where, where, where? Shit, I got really like sync vortex derailed there. Um, what are we talking about here? Right. So the actual um correct placement of the elements on the x y plane, and then and then you say the additional fractal placements and, and all the kinds of extra dimensionality we can see on this stuff. Um, I don't think that stuff has to be there actually, to identify constellation ac activity all the time in every case. You know. So the fact that we have here a um one that isn't exactly constellated I'm noticing here we, we do have double rectangles here as well you know there really are enough elements here for me to call it though i hope that all made sense i'm not trying to wiggle out of dimensionality requirements you know i'm just trying to suggest that we're dealing with something natural in some way and organic and the the boundaries aren't so clear and there's a lot happening at once so anyway Uh, now it becomes a little more clear why these, why it's a transit that was itself in a sense a transitional image. Look at all this structure, yikes. Yeah, because in fact the elephant is functioning more as an N. Here's the antenna, the protrusion, and the tusks are very antenna like as well. I would say this is an element that does a, some kind of double duty. I mean, it's also clearly an atomic kid like thing weird animal thing. But here it appears with this vertical energy right along with all of these again. So I think that's the end side because this is so S over here with our growing roses. Uh, and here on the teapot, actually, we have a depiction of, you know, there's one tower, there's another tower. And... Jeez, man, some of this stuff is so weird. Two towers. This stuff here looks very much like, I mean, I know that's a tree, but it really looks like fire. Fire coming on, you know, to do with this tower, kind of coming off of this side of this tower. This one has a little choop. And this stuff just looks like the smoke. It looks like the black smoke line. I mean, it really looks to me like the black smoke line. I think that gets a lot of dimensionality. This whole thing almost looks like a little, you know, because we've got this raised element. It makes this whole thing look like N. It's another, it's, there's a spout, right? So it's N, N, N. And then that makes this the explosion side. And it makes this side of this is... So that's also fractalized, you see. We have handed um, placements on two levels of analysis there in, in the image. Fucking incredible. Oh gosh. It's going to do something else now. What happened? We get a penny and a quarter. Wow, look! Oh, wow! Wow. I'm wowing for a few reasons. One is that, um, you know, the, the, the color space is conforming correctly. We have this copper joining the red and green elements over here. And then we have this silver element joining the, um, what was already a gray and white and black and blue, you know. It's all N over here. And then Michael on a dollar bill, is a 2020. <laughs> 723 makes a nice appearance there again. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. It's a bit like 121s. It's just Michael in, in black and white print again, reinforcing his N energy as well. It's 
an animal with a thing on its head like this again. Michael sleeping in a weird oxygen chamber with a lot of controls. You know, it's, it's keeping it in the area. Here we seem to have text about a snowstorm. So storm, as this is here, a storm of sand. Knocked boats, something. So there's something about a collision happening here. Or a storm involving vehicles in this area where we have the red, whatever that is. Along with the weird animal. So I think it's a, a bit constellated there. Now we cut to this image. Um, of course, I want to note the rabbit. <laughs> and just look, you know. <laughs> Two towers with red things on top. It's like they're actually pillars, you know. And then they actually have this for eyes. Like two identical red birds guarding the entrance to this thing. You know, and this bunny out here. It's like Mr. N bearing witness to S right there. What animal is that in the center? Some kind of cat, maybe? Red and blue flags, I find that interesting. So now we have Michael again, you know, it's... Before, it might have been said, you know, you're over, I'm over reading, with the, the trailer being, I was saying, it's like, has elements of a submarine, and then it's like, Michael's ejected from a plane, you know? It makes the whole thing like this weird, like, but look, now Michael's really in something that's like a biplane and he's wearing like pilot gear, which also of course gives him a nice B visor. <laughs> B visor sounds a lot like B wiser. <laughs> um, anyway, in a biplane that, that now somehow is also a boat, you know, so it's, And he passes through the twin red pillars. Now we're sailing towards this giant mouth. One, two, three, four. Iguanas. Yeah. So you again, think, think back, back to, to the four, four clocks. clocks that uh, the four we saw in that. Well, in fact, we. Well, discovered there were eight in the end, but what visually is, appears to be like four camera heads and so on. This is a real motif somehow. Of course, this is also very Gozer with the animals flanking the sides of the portal like that. And, and here we now we have the two dogs um, moving into frame. So that's, you know, that's a Hecate. Uh, entrance. Heck, he's guarding that doorway, I would say. And they're there kind of partially just because it's a pun on the lyrics, you know. Just stop dogging me around. So he's being dogged around, so we're looking at dogs. <laughs> What a weird, surreal turn to place the dogs in suits and then place them next to telescoping visor elements like that again. What do you call these things? There must be a name for these. But those are specifically things that you use to look at, like, tourist landmarks, you know? They're like public access binoculars basically strange bunch of stuff coming together there obviously with the the teeth the water explosions the camera and the phone it's 
mixtures of N and S, you know, but just all 911 projection space. This element that's going by, I really don't know. It looks like a cookie, maybe. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookie. In fact, I'm quite sure that's what it is. I wonder what that's about. Um, and then, of course, we're passing by a brain. Here, I think we start to enter strange, matchy territory again. This kind of segmentation, you know, this has been one of those aspects that once I learned how to see it, see, there's, there's a lot of it here in this area. It really does seem to relate to the texture detail that appears on the top of the North Tower. Here, the alligator, I think, is is tracking more texture detail just to do with the kind of segmentation you see on those buildings. The alligator is also another animal with big toothy jaws, just like the clown here. And so that would make the brain, which is lit with a strong red highlight on the left side. We have red on the clown here as well, which makes this one signed almost. Yeah, it's as if the entire brain stands for the S explosion here. And that tracks, you know. We said that one possible object, uh, or an, it's not a possible, it's just an object that exists at that location of the projection space um, is like a mind blow redhead head explosion idea. So a big brain with a red light on it conforms. Here, a doorway is opening in it. And is that a globe? Is that the Earth, perhaps, that's come out of it? Ah, the Earth complete with a moon orbiting around it. Now, that's very strange. Is that a nose and a scalpel? So much happening. Um, now we have dog in a fedora appearing here. This is more N. It's again, it's N that is that is also seems to be to be reflecting aspects of S with both with the alligator and now with the dog. Those are strange animal elements. The nose as a piece of flesh that is about to be cut tracks atomic kid pretty well, I'd say. Considering these two objects as a potential match in isolation. Computer science an object can be a variable, a data structure, a function, or a method, and as such is a value in memory reference what? by identify. I somehow triggered <laughs> I took a triggered Siri. I'm gonna take a screen cap of this. Uh good thing it's eleven ten PM. <laughs> Object, location in computer memory having a value and referenced by an identifier. Thank you, Siri. That's so helpful. Stupid interruptions. What was I saying? Uh, considering this is a potential match, we do have the aluminum um, cylindrical element on the upper uh, right-hand side of the, of the <laughs> imaginary frame I've placed around these objects. Uh, and the nose relative to that in the lower left-hand side. So that, that's a correctly di um, handed diagonalized match, potentially um, fractally placed here. It really holds that alignment, doesn't it? Aha! And here comes Michael in the boat biplane thing to really complete the, uh, the tableau. That one's pretty amazing altogether. Here's a ship wreck. It's a pirate ship, so pirates and terrorists close together associatively. This pirate is linked to the moon. We have a tree that splits into kind of two primary limbs. That reminds me a lot of the tree that we see in Hellraiser 3. 
Each limb touches a strong red element. Here we have the heart. So it has this on it. Interesting. And here we have a red lamp. That's a very, very interesting match. It's not handed, really. And it's not, it's, it, this is more of a kind of a cluster, but the red twins thing is so strong here with the, right in the middle of the image like that with the bifurcating tree and then, yeah, the heart and the lamp touching it. And we do have a shipwreck in the image. Ah, and then there's a kind of an explosion there. The heart, the heart explodes open and then Michael in the plane over there. So I guess that would really make this, this is all N over here, even though the, you know, and it's true, of course, um, there were two planes in that, in that, that contributed to that image, that particular image, a plane for each tower. I'm not sure what to say about the treasure down there. That's, that's interesting. The Atomic Kid is a big pile of treasure. Yeah, I can sort of start to see it. Look how perfect Michael's color space is here. Red, yellow, green, that's a very precise match for the vector. Isn't that pretty interesting over there as well? Two figures? Yes. Wow. Look at that. We're gonna, we're gonna have to take that back. I was wowing because, you know, while I was focusing on these two angels that appear in the background, or what... I guess we do kind of have an image with three layers now. There's the pirate ship in the background, the two angels in the middle plane, and then actually in the foreground, we now have a pirate. That's very weird because it's like the dead pirate, the living pirate. So yeah, it's like the dead, the living, and the twins in the middle. And they're both pirates, which I just said is like sort of terrorists. Here comes the plane. And this pirate is about to light a cannon that then appears to be more or less aimed at the twins, at the twin angels. <laughs> Which Michael's kind of also about to collide with in his plane which now is also kind of lined up with the shipwreck here. Such an image of why is this occurring? And then we have a big water explosion there. It actually does seem to kind of replicate this idea again with the, the, the twin branches here. A lemur. I think these were all like Michael's pets. Just had like all kinds of strange animals. It is interesting because it's like a part of the background falls away. And now we're seeing into a deeper layer. And what we're seeing now is actually a wraparound to the very first image of the video. And now because it, it's, it's Michael tied down being the support of this carnival, which we saw in Silhouette. Now we're seeing our first glimpse of that same s scene, but um, lit now. You see it's, it's Michael's hand and one of these weird Mr. N dog mashup things is hammering down the chains that bind him. <sighs> and then we just really get a depiction of the temple. You know, the temple, like Solomon's temple, I mean. <laughs> I don't know how else to read that one. I mean, look at it. And then we get these two flames moving in to alignment with it. Here's a weird polar bear. Here comes Michael in his plane car boat thing. Now, see, this is 
part of what makes me think that we can read the trailer as a reference to movie trailer, additionally. Uh, because now we're moving into a segment that's kind of all about Elizabeth Taylor movies. <laughs> and we're just quoting Elizabeth Taylor movies here. Look how there's like a kind of an Egyptian queen or pharaoh motif. Um, again, another kind of twin motif, but surrounding that particular clip there. It situates Liz like a video god and relates, of course, directly to the text that we see here. Michael builds shrine to Liz. So this thing is a shrine to Elizabeth Taylor. So it's Solomon's Temple, plus the idea of the twins on fire with matchy elements. I find it just absolutely unreal from a personal stand sync standpoint that we get easy written here at the end. Maybe it's not even personal. We just see a lot of that. The Z is like the lightning bolt. I don't know what the E is. It's like max three fingers. It's a really weird thing probably not talk so quite so fluidly and openly about weird symbols. I don't know what they are yet. I don't want to mislead people. But anyway, we do get a weird easy there. And we're talking about Liz's temple. And then we see another sort of temple to Liz, but this temple is a, is a video quote. It links it to the other temple because we have this twin action again. And also we have this same pyramidal structure here. And so so twins and pyramids are starting to become linked in the image space here, and that should really remind of patterns we've observed um, in the Dawnwood material in particular. Many images of Elizabeth twin pyramids. You know, and we are, in a way, in an art gallery here, a strange kind of art gallery that maybe we've been told is also a temple, i.e. a church. It's all so similar to the material we've, we've seen elsewhere. And it does make me think very strongly of the pyramid gallery, I, I have to say. I find this so cool how they've they've cut Elizabeth out of the source material. It's very nicely done. Three dogs in their own weird torpedo plane. I see three dogs. I three or two. I think of Hecate. I do find it notable because previous we've seen a lot of symmetrical pairings of animals, and then here we have three just very nicely. Position. This would definitely appear to be a, a skull with some kind of like cosmic explosion happening in its head. <laughs> and now we're zooming out of a hole in Michael's head. The three dogs end up there next to the tunnel. So we're, we're right, we've wrapped back around really to that first scene again. People falling down in parachutes. And we see now Michael, how Michael's hand becomes the tower. Three dogs in the plane, which is now on the roller coaster. You get all these explosion palm tree things again. How to describe it? Three bald <laughs> lamp. 
would appear to be another one of these like sort of nutcracker figures with a red hat. Not sure what that is. Weird portal world. Here's this strange clown with its mouth again. So, man in tall hat, vertical lamp thing, clown mouth, also in a weird hat. A lot of this. And then over here we have the dog plane thing. <laughs> So cool. That says Haunted Mine down there. There's Michael with his al alpaca. Is that what that is? We see them go by two pillars there, right? It's another complex one. Belt thing that's doing this on a guy who's going like this. I, I, I find it North Towery. And it's joined here by Michael's hand as tower. Over here I see we have the plane again. Now we have twin clowns again with their big clown mouths. So the mouths are an element we want to see over here. On the other hand, these are the twins. And it's quite nice to see the twins placed where the explosion would go, in my opinion. Uh, and we've seen that already in Moonwalker, if you recall. Um, here are the twin clowns, which is amazing to me. This is like this, at least the second, maybe the third statement of tw straight up twin clowns we get in this artifact. But anyway, here they are appearing in conjunction with, again, a twin pillar motif. So it's made out of ice cream cones. Must be. I mean, what do you think? Must be conscious on some level. It's hard to imagine all that twin pillar imagery in this video is self-organizing. I think it's there for some reason. Hard to say what, though. Thrills, that's very interesting. Isn't that a weird situation to, to, to be in? Because I know what the reason is, you know? I know what the high level, what I would consider the divine reason is. It's like we've kind of, we've kind of cracked that a little bit, but I almost never know like what the mundane <laughs> reasons are. Like what was the art? What was this artist thinking when they decided to place these particular elements here? You know, so weird how these things happen. Corn and beef. I just, I love that we get a nice red bee over here. So as we move down here, um, of course we get another clown head here. Italian heroes, corn on the cob. Yeah, I do think all this stuff is, this all seems to, like all together like this, seems to track the, the end tower wound to me. Some numbers there, 229202. <laughs> well, you know what I'm gonna say about that, which is that twos can be rendered as some um, Roman numeral twos, which means we could rewrite that as Two, two, nine, two. <laughs> Look at this thing. That's really pretty unbelievable. Combining with this, you know, a lot of S energy over there. Really pretty amazing. Right, the Elephant Man. Michael to buy Elephant Man's bones. I don't know much about his interest in the Elephant Man. Also, I don't even really know much about that story, or even that much about the David Lynch film. I should go on a bit of a research trip there at some point. Well, okay, you know, here we have, a, again, it's like this hat. 
bow tie. This one's very striped, holding a cane that's also segmented. And, you know, it's a lemur, I think. In any case, it's some kind of animal that has, like, raccoon eyes. So that suggests the visor. And then we're looking at an image of a weird twin. It's some kind of animal twin fused together thing. Laughing collar. What does that mean, I wonder? <laughs> this hat blows by. Such a nice touch. Oh, and then we see bubbles in a ball and chain for bubbles. Interesting shirt choice. Funny idea. Wow, I'm getting tired. I think I might be starting to miss important details. Well, we're almost at the end of this video, so um, we'll wrap it up, and then I, you know, I guess we'll get to the next section of Moonwalker when we, when we get to it. Um, oh come on, went by a bit fast there, but we have this weird red bird thing here. Oh, God, that's a weird looking thing, especially appearing in connection with Michael's outfit here. It really. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the shape of that trash can's lid and the shape of that hat and then the white and the black, like, I think the video artist is having some fun there, maybe matching Michael's outfit to that thing. But anyway, here's a double-headed tiger as well. Right on this side, this kind of towery, chooped element here that would appear to be a mouth. So that would be the elephant man's bones, but you see how it constitutes another match. Michael is the North Tower, of course. And this is the South Tower. Weird animal-human hybrid idea. It's, in, it's framed again by um, Twin Pillars and all this kind of segmentation. Interesting image. I feel like there's a lot of detail in these images that we're not seeing. You know, like I'm very curious about this area, but Hard to say what's happening there, even at a basic level. What are those objects, you know? So now we're entering the portion of the music video, which I would describe as, yeah, Michael's escape. He's going to regain his agency, but in so doing, he destroys the carnival, right? So it's a nice tidy metaphor. I quite like the way it comes together as a music video about fame and celebrity and all of this. Um, we've gone right back to this weird motif again, though. You know, again, we're looking at twin pillars. Again, they have this kind of element. Again, they're capped in red. Three dogs in the plane appear again. Really not letting that one go. Let's have a blue and a red flag here. I know there's there's another blue one there. It's covered, but it's together like this. Now this is a truly spectacular effect. I think like think about how much had to come together here to animate this thing falling apart. It's really amazing. My opinion. So we're also looking at a big sort of architectural collapse sequence, though. And here we're actually seeing a pillar fall. It's 
So I find it very strange, even just from the standpoint of its long or it's kind of like overall structure, you know, the whole basic form of the thing is a music video that just culminates in buildings falling. Buildings that are kind of weirdly connected to or fused to Michael Jackson in some weird way, you know. Okay, and that's the end of Leave Me Alone, and that's the end of this entry in the Moonwalker analysis, I think. Um, my energy wasn't super, super up for this one. It's, you know, approaching midnight. At the end. A very long week. Which I worked probably too much for too little money. But, um, man, it's good to just be working and be making some money. And particularly be making money. Doing things related to art and video. I'm very thankful and appreciative of um, the changes that have occurred in my life recently. Man, I'd like to just keep going because the film gets very interesting now. This is... I, I, I kind of hoped we would, we would breeze through Leave Me Alone and then we could spend a significant amount of time in this area because... I've been eager to get through, or get to, rather. Um, but it's the weekend, and I actually think I don't have work scheduled this weekend, so with any luck, maybe we can do a little bit more analysis tomorrow. At any rate, we'll get to it at some point. All right, thanks, everybody, for hanging out once again. And um, as always, I'll see you in the future. Catch you later. Bye.